Hey guys, welcome to the video. Welcome to my channel. So today we are going to work on a bowling pin. Gonna do some custom paint work here. I wanna take you guys through the steps that it took me to get to this, okay? Yeah, pretty simple. As you can see, there's not a lot of colors involved. Not a lot of blending, uh, just some small area painting. So I'm gonna show you how to do it. I did uh, actually take these bowling pins and body worked them, primed them, painted them this uh, green and clear coated them so that they would be good to go. We'd have a nice firm or solid foundation to paint on top of. So we're just using three colors on top of that green. I have white, I have a black color, and I have bright solid red. We're using our Iwata airbrush here, the Studio Series compressor, and an Iwata Eclipse CS gravity fed airbrush. It's not the most expensive, it's not the cheapest. Um, really, on this project, I don't even think you would have to have an airbrush. A small touch-up gun would be sufficient to do everything that we're gonna do here. So, let's take and uh, get right into this. Going for that military look, and I cleared it because I didn't know how long it would be before I got onto this project. You can see by the dust on there, it's been a minute. So, we're gonna take this, sand it down with some 400 grit wet sandpaper and start doing some masking. And it's all sanded down to a matte finish. I don't know how well that stuff will show up on camera, but it's got some defects in it still. This thing, uh, it been hit a few times pretty hard. So at any rate, we got it smoothed out for the most part. I have some vinyl here of some stars or yeah, uh, a cutout of them, just randomly placed there. And I've done my best to get them to lay so that they're all stuck down and they look like a star would. So we're gonna take that, throw a little masking to get it a little further away from it. And we'll get the airbrush loaded up with some white base coat and we're gonna make these stars white. All right, guys, I've got the white in the airbrush and uh, I don't know, back just a couple of inches from the surface and using some light trigger here just to gradually build up the white on each one of these stars. I get them kind of covered and then I'll go over them probably two times completely to make sure we have all the white we need on there. Um, you can tell I mask back a little ways away from it just to keep any overspray off of this bowling pin. So just continue working on this. Um, the white may be too far reduced and it takes a good amount of time to cover. It's some old paint that I had in my cabinet. And man, how many times do you have to go over them? I think it was three. We'll get it all covered good and then we'll untape it and look for the best way to set this thing uh, to put our rest of our artwork on. We're gonna do a little warbird paint job kind of, have the, the shark mouth with an eyeball on it. So hey, let's just keep on going. So, sprayed it. I didn't uh, record me unmasking this because that was the average size piece of uh, masking that I got to come off of that pre-mask. I think she's getting old. But, uh, you know, they were free. Somebody said don't ever sniff a gift fish, so that's kind of where we're at. Now, 
it's got a lot of glue left on here. So it makes my lines look super bad. We're gonna take that, clean it up with some uh, wax and grease remover. Cleaning this thing up is huge. Um, I'm just using that wax and grease remover uh, to soften up the glue from my vinyl that was kind of old or it really wasn't designed to be painted on and it's 50 degrees in my shop. I don't, I don't know which one it is. It's just kind of sucking here to have to do all this cleaning on this thing. And you know, you just stick after it, and make sure that it's good and clean. I think this is a really good reason to use some automotive grade paint and not something that's out of an aerosol can or an acrylic. Um, if you have to start cleaning this hard on it, you'll probably wipe a lot of that paint off of there. Where this, it didn't really remove any of it. So, yeah, for whatever that's worth. All right. So I just wanted to film where I'm at right now. And I have drawn kind of the, the shark mouth on there. Put the little eye over here. And what I'm doing is... I'm trying to figure out what is the best way to paint all this because there's black and red inside of this mouth and the teeth are all white, but they have kind of a black outline around them to make them look finished. So I can do the black outline with a brush or I can paint this black first and then I can end up leaving just a little bit of that edge of black. So... Hey, I'll bring you in and show you what I've decided. And it may not be the easiest way, but at least you'll see um, how to do it one way. All right, so you can kind of see where I'm at now. Those areas that I had drawn out and cut out, I or they weren't cut out in the last video. I cut them out and I sprayed a little bit of that white base in. Then I just used... Uh, a sharp blade and I cut out the teeth that I had drawn on my piece of tape and you probably can't see it in the video but there is a, a small border in between the teeth and the other tape there's a small little gap there so I get my black outline around this whole thing the teeth will stay white we're gonna spray I don't know, it's not really black. It's uh, it's it's kind of a real dark, dark gray color. But I, I think for our purposes, it's gonna look like it's black. It's already reduced. There's very little left in there. Perfect for using the airbrush. I mean, the airbrush cup holds almost nothing, guys. So it's a lot of fun to use it, but actually spraying what, I, what I'm doing on this bowling pin you could do it with a small spray gun. You wouldn't necessarily have to have an airbrush. This is just kind of something fun to do. guys so here I got all that black sprayed or what looks like it's black it's really a dark graphite kind of color with some metallic in it but at any rate I've got that sprayed on and here I'm coming in with uh, just bright solid red um, I think this is something that I had left from painting a fender on a car or something like that you know these are all just scraps that I had laying around and I've said this a couple times through the video, really there's nothing uh, in here that you need to have this airbrush for uh, to do this paint job. Every bit of this could be easily done 
with a, a touch-up gun or a, a small gravity feed paint gun. So we get this red put on and then uh, we will unmask some stuff, I believe. All right, so you can see I've got just a little bit of white showing here. That's going to be our our mad red eye on this thing. Try operating this uh, airbrush left-handed. Ooh, that's kind of rough. That's all we need right there. It's just a tiny bit of color. Yeah, here we go. Peeling the tape back so you can see my uh, my line there, and just kind of supposed to be the tongue. There's a little shot of his mad red eye. And we're gonna grab us a, a stir stick and make it into a little brush here. Do some fine detail. In that. All right. So as we keep going, I get that tape started and start peeling it back and. Just have to be careful as you do this to make sure that you're not uh, peeling all of the, be really careful as you dig in to get that tape loose that we don't uh, dig into that base coat. It's important to let it dry, I guess is what I'm trying to say. I would uh, normally have a heat gun or something sitting out, but uh, through the magic of YouTube, I'm able to do this throughout a day while I'm doing other projects and it's just kind of a fun little sit down sideline for a few minutes. But as we untape, you can see some of those teeth turned out great. Some of them kind of turned out a little wonky. We'll get that all fixed eventually though. So I just needed to make some really fine lines on this thing. So I took a, a paint stir stick and cut it off into like a super sharp point. You could use a uh, toothpick for that, but you can see I was able to get some really fine little lines there. Maybe make it look like a uh, some blood vessels in the old eye. All right, guys, so here I've masked off uh, the lines that are gonna be like the, uh, where the panels meet that this thing's put, at, put together out of. We're talking like uh, riveted together, I guess, out of some, out of some panels like maybe a, an aircraft would be. That's kind of the, the theme of this whole thing is uh, just to, to play with that and do it as simple as possible. I've looked at a lot of videos on YouTube and yeah, man, the guys make stuff look awesome. But uh, with all the shading and everything else that they want to do in them, I want to just keep it simple here. It may look a little bit more two dimensional than having all that shading in it. But I think the the point is to have something that you appreciate and you think is cool. So here we go. We're just taping this off and uh, spraying a little bit of that black base coat in there to make these lines. This stuff dries so fast, even though it's not that warm in my shop, it's, uh, it's drying off quick enough that I can do this uh, with only about five minutes in between each taping and spraying.
So we got our bowling pin. It's looking pretty cool, I think. Um, got the teeth there. Got these little lines masked and painted on it now. So next step for us is to lay us out some lines going across the other way. Put me one there. Maybe have one more at the top of this. And then I'm going to go right through these teeth here and kind of clean up that area where it didn't work out exactly the way I wanted it to. So we'll get us a couple of those lines set up. We'll paint them black. Then we'll figure out how we're going to make this look like it's riveted together. I am using eighth inch fine line to lay down and leave a little gap so I can paint it. And I don't have really a way to measure that or anything because we're just putting about a 16th inch wide line in this. Not very big at all. So, hey, let's keep going with it. So something on here to look like rivets and I kind of want an even spacing. So eighth inch tape right on the outside. You know, if I hadn't have pulled this off when I unmasked it, I wouldn't have to go back and redo all this. I do that. I've taken another little piece of wood and just kind of shaped it. So you got a small little round spot, round-ish. And I'm just dipping this in the very edge of uh, my, my can of my dark colored paint. And just randomly going through and touching right outside of that tape. there you have it we've got all of our plating done the rivets put in there the teeth the eye I make him look upset angry and i think this is probably as far as we need to take this we could add some shading we could do a lot of stuff to make this more three-dimensional looking i don't know that it needs it i think it looks pretty cool just the way it is it's simple and it didn't take an extreme amount of time to do. This is something, like I said, you could you could do this easily with just a touch-up spray gun. You can might be able to do it with aerosol cans of paint. So if you like the video, give it a thumbs up. S consider subscribing to the channel. And as always, we'll catch you on the next one.